you, you don't have to get anywhere. This is it. But what happens is these thoughts, some are conscious and some are unconscious, keep telling you you're not enough, this isn't enough. You've got to get something. Something bad's going to happen to you. And then these feelings in your body arise and then you begin to feel uncomfortable and agitated like I have to do something. I have to do something. There is nothing you have to do. So I think that that is what they were describing as Neo Advaita. So that's called satsang, like meeting in truth. Um, basically, by me communicating that to you, or by these words being communicated, there can be a seeing or remembering before you. So sometimes this is why people like listening to the talks because it can sort of collapse them into this moment or there can be a remembering. And that's beautiful. So that's really beautiful to have these talks which, which do this. And then what they were talking about is whether you need practice on the human level. My experiences now after before speaking a lot more from a neo-advaita perspective, which I love, and I think there's always the possibility that it can be heard through that. But I think I feel now there has to be a combination between working with the person and the emotions a little bit and hearing Advaita, like hearing non-duality. So these satsangs, these talks, so the hearing of it, so you really know who you are and that really begins to awaken. But then also working on the personal level to understand the person, so you, there can be... Um, an understanding of what would traditionally be called karma or your dynamics. Um, and the reason that I got changed or a change happened here is a combination. Firstly, it's because that's life's will. <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> Really, we're all just puppets acting out life will. So the ultimate thing is that that was just life's will. This body just started speaking differently. Um, so that's one um, answer. Then on the story of things, it was... Um, it was a combination. It was actually from working predominantly, not predominantly, I don't predominantly work with men, I work with women and men, but it was this change happened from predominantly working with men. It was with women as well. Um, but I began to realize that I attracted a lot of men. <laughs> I used to think that, I'm not sure if I attract more men or women, because on Facebook I attract more women, so they say that Facebook is more women orientated, and on YouTube I attract uh, slightly more men, so I'm not sure what it is. Um, 
but it doesn't matter. So I attract a lot of men and I particularly attract a young audience. So I attract an older audience, I attract an audience my age, but I also attract young men. And it was from working predominantly with these young men that changed, changed me, I think. Also some um, other people as well I work with, but what I began to notice was a lot of young men were coming to these talks who were suffering from sense of disempowerment, of not knowing what to do with their life, of feeling like things are chaotic, and and becoming very depressed because they can't work out what to do in that situation. And and from working with these these men, and there were some women, but it was predominantly men, because I think that there is a weakness in our society in young men currently, and I think that young men are very much at risk, which statistics show, because in our society young men don't have a place like they used to. Um, so a lot of young men are unsure what they're to be, especially white men, they're being told off for being white and being privileged. They're being told off for being too masculine. Um, women are a lot more liberated than they used to be, so they're also, and sometimes maybe women are really going through a huge change as well, so they're maybe um, like sometimes overly harsh or aggressive with young men. And I think there's a lot of men out there that come to a feeling of disempowerment. And then they come to these talks, and these talks are beautiful. Hearing non-duality is beautiful. It's your, I want to say you're so lucky to hear non-duality. We all are so lucky to have heard it, but it's, it's the divine will, so there's nobody really that's lucky. <laughs> It's what happened, but we'll just say that for the sake of language. But uh, back to the young men. So they would come to the talks and they started to use non-duality as a way to deal with all those feelings because they also feel ashamed of any idea of therapy or asking anyone for help because they already feel disempowered enough. But non-duality sounds really create, courageous, 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 and it doesn't seem or feel to them disempowering. But when you're looking at it from the wrong perspective, it can become disempowering. So when you're using it to, to plaster over already feelings of disempowerment, then it can add to that. So I love saying things like, it's hopeless, there is no point, but I hold back from saying these things now because that's disastrous for somebody that already feels depressed and disempowered. So they see it as a more courageous thing and then they agree with it, but they're agreeing with it from a wrong perspective they're agreeing from, with it from a suffering perspective. So they, as individuals, feel hopeless and powerless and like life has no point. But it's not from, that's not being said from an individual perspective and those words are actually really expansive and liberating. But it can be taken to be something that adds to this already disempowered self. And... A 
And I noticed this actually, it's not just young men, it can be all different age groups, but I noticed the young men were particularly vulnerable in this circumstance. Women, in a way, they're allowed to have feelings when they're growing up, they're allowed to cry, they're allowed to express themselves, and women are succeeding a lot more in the education system, and they, in a way, even though their paths have changed a lot, they've got a lot more clearer path than a man has currently in society. Um, and women tend to be more okay with their emotions and understand themselves a bit better, and they don't do such a good job at suppressing feelings with advita, and they're open to talking about more open to feel, talking about feelings. It doesn't add to a sense of disempowerment or unmanliness. So they're not so vulnerable to that happening, although it can happen, and it can be used as a way of adding to um, an escalating depression. Um, I also noticed from working with people that a lot of people just in general don't know how to deal with emotions and have a very negative outlook on life. And that's not essentially the problem. And the reason they, if they have a negative outlook on life is actually very logical. It's because our mind is a problem solver. So it doesn't, our mind isn't like looking to think about how wonderful this world is or how beautiful it is or how lovely this is. Our mind is designed to think about problems. So if we live in a society where it's over invested in the mind and so much tension is put in the mind, then there's a lot of fixation on problems and fixing problems. So it's obvious that people tend to have negative thought processes. It has to fix themselves in order to get liberated because liberation happens or liberation is no matter what state that person's in. However, I found when people are desperately suffering, it's unlikely they're going to resonate with these talks in the right way. And I found a relaxation and a calming down of that person is actually necessary in a lot of cases. But that's not always the case. I don't want to say it's definitely like this because life has a fantastic way of always surprising us. But it is necessary in a lot of cases for the person to relax. I did a lot of relaxation of my personality through the process. However, it wasn't me who got liberated. Liberation happened. Lisa's still Lisa and it affected me and over the last seven years my body mind has really changed and evolved and grown and expanded but it's not it's not about that like I'm definitely way more happier way more peaceful way more nice um, way less grumpy like I generally am quite a happy person now whereas before I was generally quite an unhappy person sort of I went through phases I think like when I was younger I wasn't so much but then I got into teenage and my 20 early 20s I was I wasn't so happy Oh my God, I love this subject. I just love it. I love it. And I love doing it through the internet like this. There's something so informal and beautiful about it. I love doing it live with people as well. But there's something really sweet about this and intimate. Um, so back to my point. What was my point? <laughs> I'm in one of those moods today. Which is most probably most days, but I just can't remember. 
I have a terrible memory. So listen to satsang and listen to these words and resonate with it. These talks aren't meant to contract you, but there's meant to be a resonance with them in love because love is who you are. And then on the intellectual level, listen to the practical teaching sides for the person and do that and do those things. Even, even if it's, it can't lead you to liberation, which it can't, because there's nobody that gets liberated, but it can create more space for the hearing of this. But even if it doesn't, so even if you're like, well, it's not going to lead me to liberation, there is nobody, there is nobody, it's going to balance you out more and help you have more healthy relationships and healthier life. And so, why not? So then you maybe have to go back to what was your motivation for getting into this in the first place? And more than likely, it was because you were suffering and you want to be more happy. So on the human level, just gently, gently strive to clean the cage of the human, to clean the case of the human. And then on the absolute level, just listen to the talks and let them do the work. Listen to the words. It's so beautiful. This is... Da, 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 da. I have a very small cup today. I normally have a gigantic cup, but I have a very small one today. <laughs>